All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a little bit of a Saturday pocket change market report for April 20, 2024. I want to thank you guys for coming on board. It is 420, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. We are high on life as the uh, uh, the coins feature today all coming from eBay within the last 24 to 48 hours. Um, we have a kind of an abbreviated show here today. We have about 20, 21 listings. Uh, not that I had any trouble whatsoever finding stuff from the last day or two. Uh, but, you know, usually later in the day on Saturday, you know, I, I like to do a little bit smaller report video for you guys to kind of uh, incentivize you to go out there and do some hunting of your own. Whether you're an avid coin roll hunter looking to make the next big score, or perhaps you like to go to the coin shops and the coin shows. They are plentiful. Central States is just around the corner in Schaumburg, Illinois. The next big uh, show uh, where a lot of people can take advantage of cherry picking dealer inventory in the hopes of finding some of the coins that you can find here today on the PCMR. All right, uh, a few little ground rules like normal. We don't talk about graded coins. Keep that money in your pocket generally, and I would say about 99% of the time, you do not need to grade any of these coins uh, just to have the ability to take decent pictures. And when I mean decent, that bar is set pretty low. Just take good pictures of your coins um, and send them off onto e uh, eBay. And you have your, uh, your choice of doing a buy it now type listing. Uh, you could do auctions. Five or seven day is probably the appropriate amount of time for things like this uh and just let it ride you know uh, and make sure that you're always doing your homework before you list your coins uh some folks kind of forget that step and they they they're left you know asking why did my coin sell am i asking too much do i have the right kind of error or variety these are a lot of the questions i see come across to me and then i have to explain you know well what what has to be done, what's at stake, things like that. Um, yeah, and then the photos are 100% original to each and every single listing. We didn't juice or doctor any of them to make them look better. Uh, that would just be wrong in the grand scheme of things. So you're going to get the best and worst that eBay has to offer from a various wide range of different sellers. That's the good news. Again, that bar is set pretty low. If you could snap a photo with your smartphone, whether it's an iPhone or Android device, uh, good news, you know, our current technology allows for some pretty nice pictures uh, by the time it's all said and done. All right. So, uh, yeah, like we normally do, uh, we always got to throw in a little bit of the whatnot calendar of events. Uh, I sell on this platform. In addition to eBay, I do both, but whatnot is uh, kind of like my big thing right now. We have a pretty significant April buyer giveaway event. For every one item that you purchase, it grants you an entry into the end of month giveaway, which will happen April 30th on that show. Um, so right now we have three Carson City GSA Morgan dollars. Really cool. Each one bearing a value of $350 at the minimum. And then we have a couple other graded coins. In total, we're going to have about five or six items that we're going to be giving away to our uh, to our buyers at the end of the month. Furthermore, we are a few hundred followers away from 10,000, and we're going to have a huge giveaway extravaganza once we hit 10,000. I've talked about it on whatnot, but I'm just going to kind of leave it out there. This is one that you've never seen before um, in, in the, uh, the, the coin space as far as content creators uh we have a pretty massive giveaway me and my wife spared no expense for the ten thousand follower giveaway on whatnot so um if it's your first time on the platform you want to know more about it look no further i have my referral link down below in the description box if you sign up you get 15 dollars in usable store credit right away it's a great way to buy a few up a few of the entries for the end of April giveaway event, um, you know, and all it takes really is one entry, one entry, folks, uh, to make a huge difference. So, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and breeze through the uh, the listings here this week. Thank you guys again for all your views and support. 
1949s Lincoln Wheat Set. Uh, this one looks all chewed up on the one side. It kind of does, but upon closer examination, what we have here is actually a legit ragged clip. All right, so it's just a really rough end of strip clip that we're seeing here. Uh, usually, it's going to be highlighted by kind of this rough, raggedy looking edge. Um, it, it's not going to be smooth whatsoever. Uh, this one right here had circulated quite a bit. You know, it's far from the most beautiful of coins that we do come across. But just recognize that something like this does exist. And, uh, you know, there are certain things to be on the lookout for. Uh, you can still find Blakesley effect on these coins as well. So make sure you're looking out for that. Um, but for the first coin out, this one sold for $5.68 with six bids. Uh, you know, $5.68. Way better than face value here at one cent. Uh, better than a sharp stick in the eye. That, that's what I always say. Uh, the next one that we have here is a different kind of clip. 1973D Lincoln Memorial Send. This one actually has two clips. One right above the word trust on the obverse. And one right by the date. Okay, so, uh, you know. It's uh, pretty cool to find. Uh, clips in general are some of the more easier to find mint errors out there. And, uh, you know, this one, uh, you know, is is no exception. Uh, this one right here with a couple of clips makes it worth a little bit more rather than having just one single clip. Uh, so this one was sold by Bubba Sully, who's been around the, uh, the e-commerce uh, uh, realm, I guess, uh, of selling coins on eBay for the better part of two decades. Uh, this one right here ended up selling for $7 with a couple of bids. Again, it's not nothing. Um, you know, whether you sell a coin for five bucks or $50, all that money goes into the same pool and you enjoy it just the same. You know, it's the little sales like this that kind of tend to add up, uh, you know, at the end of the month. Um, so definitely... Uh, don't feel too proud that you, you know, simply don't want to list these, uh, list everything. If, if I had to, uh, um, say, you know, just so you can build your business and, uh, you know, get, gain more positive feedback from your buyers. Uh, the next one that we have here, uh, pretty cool. Uh, this one, again, defective planchet, uh, you kind of have that, uh, that ragged kind of uh, blowhole clip on this one as well uh, that actually goes into the coin. Uh, again, this is an end of strip style uh, planche at one point that was struck over. Uh, again, pretty cool when you come across things like this. And, uh, you know, you can always tell one that's ragged in nature compared to one that, you know, is, is done on purpose uh, with intent. Um, you know, things like this will have an irregular, regular edge. Um, you know, you're, there, there's just a lot of things compared to one that's been damaged. Uh, it, it's going to play a, you know, kind of like a, a pretty big role in determining the uh, legitimacy. Uh, this one is a silver 1964D Roosevelt dime, by the way, and it's sold for $65. With nine bids. Uh, so the older you go, depending on what kind of error it is, you know, they're always going to be worth a lot more money. Uh, there's the scarcity aspect of it. There's the age part of it. Um, in this case, it's the last year of 90% silver. So that's also a pretty big uh, deal there as well. Uh, pretty cool one here. And uh, always one to look out for. It could only be found on the 1897 Indian head set. Uh, this is a misplaced punched number right in Lady Liberty's neck. They call this the one in neck variety. It's a well-known snow variety. I believe it's S1 as the uh, correct attribution. Uh, but you can see that top little flag tip of the one sticking out of Lady Liberty's neck. And uh, this one is quite strong. All right. You'd be, uh, you'd be hard pressed to miss this one. The coin in itself is in pretty good shape. I would say maybe like a VF 20 in grade 25, maybe. Uh, it does have a little bit of grease and debris on the reverse there, you know. Um, yeah, it's built up over time. Uh, but in any event, this one sold for $58, and that's with 11 total bids. So this is uh, quite a nice sale here. Um, you know, the, the floor on these tend to be around 15 20 bucks in, uh, you know, really low grades. But when you get into grades like this, I have a lot more meat on the bones. They're going to be a lot more desirable to collectors. 
The next one that we have here is actually a dual error. This is a 2001 Lincoln Memorial scent. It is both off-center, probably 10-12% off-center, but it also features a really nice clash die. You know, it's got the, uh, the prisoner scent thing happening. You can see that right on the obverse where Lincoln is. Um, that's actually a clash of the Lincoln Memorial. So a clash occurs when uh, when the dies make contact with each other, and that's simply uh, a response to just uh, you know a, a planchet not making it into the striking chamber, um, and then the action of trying to strike up a coin that doesn't exist still occurs. Um, there's still going to be some contact here, you know. In this case. It's both the anvil and hammer die making contact, thereby leaving the impression of each die on uh, on the other dies. Hopefully I didn't lose you there. Uh, so this one right here, a really good looking coin, $22.45. Uh, this was actually a buy it now hit. Uh, all centers are actually quite common for this date. Uh, 98 to 2001, you see it quite a bit. But when you have a dual error like this, they're not as common, but they are neat. Uh, the next one that we have here, I don't know where my close-up went, but this is the uh, good old 2023P Edith Kanaka Ole American Women Quarter. Uh, and this one, you can actually see it without even getting close, has the really strong clashing right on uh, George Washington's ear. All right, so you have actually the um, Edith's name clashed onto that obverse die. Uh, it's still a very strong seller. This one, for example, went for $89, but I think that also has to do with the fact that the quarter is in great shape. It looks like it was minted just yesterday. Um, doesn't have any, uh, what, what I perceive to be any circulation wear on the coin. Um, it looks pretty fresh. Uh, there are lesser examples that have been around the block um, that will not sell for $89. Probably more $10 to $15 is an appropriate dollar figure for the well-circulated ones. Uh, 1979 Washington Quarter. Uh, this one is missing uh, some good chunks of nickel-clad layer on there. Um, all I would get, probably consider to see that, that probably some of it did happen before the strike. Uh, you do notice some of the weakness there on the reverse. Um, 1979 is the date on this one. It is a Philadelphia minted coin. Um, again, very remarkable. I actually covered, I believe, a Roosevelt dime on the last show that had the same similar type of deal here where that nickel layer, you know, wasn't complete on there. Um, so this one right here, nice sale at $46.45. Uh, proving again, don't need to grade these. Uh, it looks awfully tempting because it looks a lot more than what it actually is. Um, you would spend $30, $40, to $60 to grade an error. And if you got back that kind of money uh, on the coin without the grading, you know, it, it's, it's just going to show you that grading is not a necessity with these things. Uh, here's a 1960 Roosevelt dime. Again, another really nice ragged clip. And it's featured on a pre-1965 silver. Uh, so again, very meaningful. We're a few years older than that 64 we had looked at. This particular one sold for $104.98. Always good to see. And on the earlier dates, they are worth quite a bit more money. All right, so uh, statehood quarters, as you guys know, I've talked about how important these are to collectors because it's such a large series. You know, there's... If you include the territory uh, coins, there's 56 total quarters to collect. Um, and there are people out there right now that are pursuing just about any one of them with either a broad strike or an off-center type of strike. So anything out of collar um, this, uh, certainly qualifies. And coins as minor as this one, folks, as you can tell, it's a little bit off-center, but it's nothing too crazy. The Washington State... It's one of the rarest, you know, by the time you get beyond 2005 and those last kind of like three, four years of the, the series, finding any of them that are off center struck is going to be a treasure hunt. It's like a needle in a haystack. There's not too many of them out there. Uh, so in this particular example, this is a very well circulated piece that came out of change and it managed itself for $40 and 85 cents. 
and it's not even that dramatic. You know, it's it's very minor. Um, but rest assured, these collectors that need these specific states, they will take anything they can find. Um, and you know, this is yet again another great example about how the market is ever evolving. You know, the Statehood Quarter series ended. 15 years ago it didn't seem like that long ago but that's kind of a lifetime ago you know for a series uh and we also have the virginia here uh pretty similar as far as the type of broad strike or off center spread that's on here this is a 2000p uh another nice sale from the same seller at 34 dollars and 30 cents i've seen other virginias uh that have sold with either a broad strike or off center strike um, so it's nothing new here. The prices all kind of like stay consistent too in that 30 to $35 range. Uh, we also have a 1919 D Buffalo nickel, all right, with a uh, pretty significant delamination. But what it's really cool is the lamination that's still attached to the coin actually has the full readable date and also the initial for the designer, which is that little F there uh, under the date. Um, it is a Denver minted coin. Uh, please do keep in mind, Buffalo Nichols have had kneeling issues uh, since the beginning of the series in 1913. Um, so this is actually quite a common occurrence. Um, but it's today that people are appreciating these a lot more. People are collecting them by date and are having a really good time at it. This one sold for $20.25. Uh, this is what a canceled coin looks like. If a U.S. Mint employee who's doing a little quality control ins inspection is finding that some of the coins aren't being produced to the likeness of the U.S. Mint employees, well, they're going to pull them out and they're going to be sent off for destruction. Uh, this is what they call waffled or waffling. This is actually a James Madison presidential dollar. So it's anybody's guess what was wrong with a coin beforehand. Um, but what the mint will do is they'll send these through a machine that will uh, essentially mutilate it uh, in a certain way that it's only recognizable to collectors and mint employees as being uh, damaged. All right. Um, so these are collectible. People do collect these. Uh, they sell them through uh, through the U.S. Mint. If you did like the walk up tour, um, they have these in their gift shops. Apparently, that's from what I hear. Um, there's no shortage of them. There's quite a few of them out there. Now, the larger DNOM coins, like half dollars and dollar coins, um, you know, they're a little bit more expensive. Uh, this one, for example, ended up selling for $33.98. A pretty cool little oddity, um, but it's not for everyone. Not everyone really likes waffled, uh, canceled coinage, uh, but there is a group, probably more toward the error side of things, that really do appreciate these. Uh, we actually have a counterfeit here, folks. 1944 Jefferson Nickel. What do we know about the state? Well, it's mired right in the middle of the Civil War time era. So these were actually supposed to be made in a silver manganese composition. They also had a great big giant mint mark atop the dome of Monticello. Where is it on this one? It's not there. Uh, and it looks like the coin was actually made in nickel, the regular composition of any other date outside of the wartime silver series. Uh, so this is actually referred to as a Henning counterfeit nickel. Uh, it's a contemporary type. Uh, Henning also uh, added a little bit of a loop at the bottom of the R in pluribus. You can probably see that right there. Uh, that's like one of his, uh, his calling cards, his hallmarks, you know, because counterfeiters are you know they're kind of a proud bunch you know they they want to be able to put a little something on the uh on that counterfeit die or whatever uh to show that that is indeed his work and this is the bottom loop of the r is what his uh signature is uh so these things wildly wildly popular they just continue to go up in value because uh counterfeit collectors love them $275. Man, five years ago, these things used to be around 100 bucks or less. And uh, every time one goes up, they, they sell for moon money. So uh, if you do come across any of the hitting counterfeits uh, with that bottom looped R in pluribus, congratulations. Uh, they, they are highly desired today. Uh, here's our good old, you know, kind of a mainstay on the PCMR. This is the 1995 Lincoln Memorial Cent doubled die obverse. 
also affectionately referred to as the FS101 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. Strong doubling in both the motto, In God We Trust, and Liberty, uh, two of the strongest on there. And, uh, you know, it's the 95 DDO that we probably saw the last strongest doubled die um, in the series. All right, because things just weren't the same once they went to a single squeeze press operation. Uh, this one is actually in really nice shape. It sold for $55.98. Uh, we have a uh, very early stage Lincoln Memorial set that was struck through an early stage cap die. Uh, you do have really shot, sharp brockage on this one. Uh, so as a result, it sold for $57 with a pair of bids. Um, again, uh, you're going to have that mushy strike on one side and a very well-struck reverse. Normally, it's a reverse die type. Uh, here's another great variety in Indian head scents, although a very tough date at that. 1878 uh, Indian head scent, uh, pickaxe variety. All right, so I've actually found a few of these myself, and they're really cool. Um, this one is uh, what I consider to be, you know, like a fine 12, fine 15 type level of coin. But if you look here at the top of the ribbon, it's got a uh, pretty big die gouge that looks like a pickaxe. So it's going to be right below the ear and just to the right there uh, is where you're going to find this. So you can actually see uh, uh, see the L on ribbon right there in that area as well. Uh, so this one, a big sale. Uh, the original asking price with shipping is $362.99. A best offer was accepted. I can't pull up that data anymore because uh, the program I used to pull up um, uh, best offer type of uh, figures, um, they don't do it anymore on coins. So I'm uh, kind of left with, uh, you know, like this this idea that the coin did sell for quite a bit of money. I would venture to guess maybe 300 250 bucks for this one. Uh, but a pretty cool variety nonetheless. One, by the way, that I've never talked about on any other PCMR. Uh, here's a Lincoln Memorial set uh, with a uh, pretty significant, uh, what looks to be a uh, kind of hole there on the, that bottom right corner of that coin. Uh, this is what they call an indent. Um, so an indent occurs when two planchets overlap and then they're struck together okay they're both usually are going to be off center or um, off offset a little bit um, no readable date unfortunately uh, but there is probably somewhere out in the world a, uh, a matching uh, piece that goes with this um, but this one sold for $49.50 uh, always a decent seller as well and uh, one you don't see too often, uh, how about a big old 90% 1964 candy half dollar with just a little bit of a sheet clip on there. Uh, again, uh, we don't see these on the bigger denomination of coin. Uh, this one ended up selling for $34.95 with 10 total bids. So uh, people do recognize that this is kind of a uh, scarce occurrence. And probably one of the neatest errors I have seen in quite some time um, is this coin. And I kind of find it hard to believe it's not a graded holder. This is that one, that part of that 1% that almost rest assured needs to be graded every single time. This is a triple struck Pennsylvania statehood quarter. Uh, you can see a couple of P mint marks in there. Um, it's a 99, you know. I, I mean, it's really cool. Um, so... Yeah, what's better than double struck? Triple struck. And I've seen a few of the Statehood Quarter Series that were triple struck. And they are all quite nasty. They are beautiful. Um, this one, I actually had my eye on. I thought I would just squeak in a few bids in there. But it just got way too spicy at the end. $697.55 with 28 total bids. My goodness. Um, for an ungraded specimen of one of the coolest mint errors that you will ever lay eyes on um coins and cards back at it again uh with another banger uh, admittedly this coin looks like it was probably cleaned uh you can see the hairlines especially on the reverse but it's such a nice high grade probably like au details key date 1895s is the uh, date on this one uh it sold for 1960 dollars with 38 bids um, someone made an offhanded comment about this particular seller and said, oh, they, they launder money. But up to this point, 
have not proven without a reasonable or shadow of a doubt why they think points and cards launders money. So when when that type of bullshit comes up, you better be ready to uh, to follow up with some sort of reasoning here, um, because a lot of the people that I cover on this show they watch this, and uh, that is a slanderous comment, and it can lead to some legal ramifications. So I'm letting you guys know. You guys can flex and exercise your First Amendment rights all you want. Uh, but watch out for the slander, you know, especially when it comes with someone's business. You don't have to agree with them in any respect or, or whatever. Um, but I have admired coins and cards, you know, they've been around the business for uh, a decade plus, you know, um, they have a really good feedback. They sell a lot of big banger coins, ungraded, some clean, some not, you know, you're left to your own devices on how you want to proceed there. But you know, to, to, make, to say things like that, um, just be careful, all right? Uh, that, that's, you, you, have to, you have to think before you act and use that right side of that brain before you go and say things like that. I just thought I would make that aware. Again, you guys are free to say whatever the hell you want, but there, these people do watch my PCMR each and every single week. And when they find that, you got to be ready. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and then enough about that. Final one, of course, uh, we got a bicentennial quarter here. Uh, struck through a piece of cloth for crying out loud. And the thing that mid errors, you know, we've seen it all on bicentennial quarters. How about this? I, I mean, it, I've seen another bicentennial quarter that was struck through uh, cloth before, uh, but nothing to this level. This is actually a really nice one. Uh, so as you would imagine, the price tag was very big. There was a lot of people that ended up bidding on this thing. Guess what? It's not graded. Ha ha. There you go. Um, $365 was the final bid on this one with 22 total bids. A lot of activity. So that, ladies and gentlemen, rounds out our pocket change market report for the weekend. Please do keep in mind the information provided is for educational use only, not financial advice. Please do collect and or grade responsibly and watch what you say in those comments, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to try and out uh, one of these businesses who's only trying to make a living, make sure you got your information all in a row. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to today's video if you enjoy things uh as always thank you for all your views and support and i hope to see you here back on the next coin video very soon you guys uh keep on collecting and uh go get yourself a nice piece out in circulation so long